This is Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm Christy Wright, best-selling author of my new devotional, Living True, 40 Days to Get Back to You. I'm also a Ramsey personality, and I'm joined today by my good friend, also best-selling author, also Ramsey personality, Anthony O'Neill. They let us do this again together. This is going to be fun. Uh, and it's going to be real fun. You know? <laughs> it may not be as fun as last time, but it'll be, it may be better. Here's one of the things people can count on if okay. you and I are hosting this show. Listen. They're going to get fired up. Yeah. Like, we don't coast. We don't even have a gear no. that is coasting. We don't. No cruise control. We, we go all in and we are here for you. So we're taking your calls today, 888 5225 If you have a question about money, if you have a question about business, maybe it's a side business, small business, home-based business, or just you got an idea and you're not sure if it can be a business, or maybe you just have some questions about life and you need some advice, hmm. we are here for you. Phones are open, 888 Five two two five. You know, Anthony, I was thinking about this idea of advice. This is what we do. You do this on your show with the table. Yep. I do this with the Chrissy Wright show. These come out weekly. You guys can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts, on Instagram, all that good stuff. We love to help people. Yeah. And we love to give them advice and give them hope and and give them direction where we can. Um, just yesterday, I had a conversation with someone that is an expert in the parenting space. Okay. It was 50 minutes. Okay. And Anthony, I walked out of that conversation literally lighter. Oh, wow. Like wow. just simple advice from someone that is an expert with boys and the ages that my boys are. I'd had so much angst about how do we handle this situation or that situation. And I, and I was like, you know what? I need help with this. Mm -hmm. I need to ask someone else. And so I had a great conversation with someone, author, um, brilliant parenting expert. And Anthony, when I left, I just literally felt lighter. That's what advice and help from someone else can do. That's it, what, it sets you free. It really does. And, and for me, when you get practical and good wisdom mm -hmm. um, in whatever situation you're in, wisdom and knowledge, uh, you feel better. You feel equipped uh, to go back into your particular space. And as long as you apply, check this out, the advice, the wisdom, the knowledge, then you will do better. But now, uh, if you don't apply the advice, the wisdom and the knowledge to your situation, to your life, then what? Then you just wasted your time. Yeah. And, and it's interesting because I feel like that there are certain things in life that we just expect ourselves to know how to do. Hmm. So like, uh, let me give you an example. Let me go back to high school. I remember I joined the track team in high school hmm. and I was fast, but I wasn't uh, trained. And so I had this coach that was that trained me uh -huh. in running. Now you just think you're supposed to know how to run, right? Like everybody knows how to run. You just you just now, you just do it. Now, Christy, uh, <laughs> you were, and I've talked about were, this before. Were, were you really fast? Uh huh. I was the only white girl on the track team. <laughs> I was the only white girl on the four by 100 relay team. I think that's fast. A little Overton High School. Fast. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Here's, here's the thing, though. But I had a coach that trained us in huh? drills and sprints and weightlifting and all the things that you do to get faster, to get stronger. And yeah. as a result, I performed better. But yes. running is one of those things that you think, oh, I'm just supposed to know how to do it. Parenting, I think, is one of those things. You're supposed to just know how to do it. Money is one of those things. I'm just supposed to know how to do it. No. And and we don't. No. We don't. If, especially if our parents don't teach us, especially if we don't learn it in school, we're fumbling around in the dark. We're living paycheck to paycheck. Yep. We're yep. frustrated with our kids and don't know why we can't see eye to eye and help them. And and we're going, hey, guys, listen, the one thing you need is what anyone needs in an area you're not an expert in. You just need a little bit of help. Yeah. You just need to reach out to someone that knows how to do what you know how to do. And here at Ramsey Solutions, we know money. That's, that's We that's... are the best at it. We have helped millions of families get out of debt, build wealth. And take control of their future. And that is what we are here to do for you on The Ramsey Show. 888-825-5225. If you have a question for Anthony O'Neill or myself about money or business, y'all know I love to help you with your business ideas, help you monetize your business, pay yourself, stop feeling weird about selling and all the things that go with that. I would love to help you. Or if there's just something in your life you want to grow as a person, you're questioning, you have a question about your goals, 
we would love to help you yeah. get the advice that will sell, set you free, like I felt yesterday when I had someone help me, and also go further faster. Yeah. Make yeah. more progress. You're not supposed to know how to do it all yourself. You know what? It's, some, it's so funny you talk about you know your session yesterday. I think it was Tuesday. It was Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday of this week. Um, I went into my therapy session. I actually see a therapist two mm -hmm. times. Yeah. Oh, I'm uh, pro. Yes. 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 I'm. Um, I see a therapist two times a month. Um, and <clears throat> every time I walk in, I remember the first time I walked in there. She said, Anthony, uh, this is not going to help you if you're not honest, mm. if you're not transparent, if you're not vulnerable, and if you're not open to the advice and to the wisdom that I'm going to give you. Mm -hmm. But I can't give you good advice and wisdom if you're not giving me the truth, mm -hmm. if you're not being vulnerable, if you're not being honest. And and I think for us, uh, when you give us a call, you know, give us a call. Uh, because I think the dumbest question that you can ask is a no question, is by not asking. And when you call us, we're going to give you practical wisdom and advice. And here's one thing I'll tell you. And I, and I know this about Christy as well. If we don't know the answer, we're going to tell you. Absolutely. We don't know the answer. That's right. You know, I, I have no problem sitting here saying, I don't know, bro. Or I don't know, right. ma'am. I mean, because right. I don't want to give practical advice. And it's not practical good advice. Right. Um, I'm not going to be talking just to be talking because I do know the weight of what we carry here at Ramsey Solutions. And I want to make sure I'm giving you the right advice. And then if it's not the practical law advice, I'm going to say, hey, this, this is my personal opinion. It's not law, but my personal opinion. Um, and my therapist does that all the time, Christine. Whenever I leave her office, I remember we got a bunch of high schoolers in here and I say in front of them. Uh, I remember the first time, Christy, I walked in, I didn't leave the same. I started crying. Mm. I was crying like I was a little kid. <laughs> I was crying like I was younger than them kids. Now, I feel why? Like I, what were what was the, what were those tears because, about? Because I opened up, oh, yeah. and I never went that deep mm -hmm. into saying, you know what? I really want help. Yeah. I mean, and I was so vulnerable, and she helped me understand a lot of the things that you're going through are not because of them. It's because of something deep inside of you that you haven't resolved. Mm -hmm. And I was like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And, and, and it felt so good uh, to be able to have someone to talk to. And so if you give us a call, great. But if you don't give us a call, go talk to somebody. Yeah. Get practical help wisdom from somebody but give us a call though. you make a you make a good point about being honest because sometimes on this show that's one of the things we have to do we have to do a little digging yeah it's like no 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 tell me the real story yeah. now what's going on there yeah and and it can be hard to be honest it can be hard to be vulnerable but if you're not honest then you can't do the real work you need to do to get the help that you need and and I, it makes me think of the scripture you can quote me you, you know the bible better than i do but no discipline seems mm -hmm. pleasant at the time but painful you teach however you. It produces a harvest of righteousness for yeah. those who have been trained by it. And when we're honest with ourselves, when we reflect on how we contribute to the problem, maybe weaknesses or blind spots that we have, when we get outside help from someone that's smarter than us, knows more than us, when you and I do that, yep. and, and that makes us better people, but it also helps you solve things at the root issue when you get the help you need. 888 yeah. we are here for you. This is The Ramsey Show. Cliff and I joined Christian Healthcare Ministries because we really like the concept of uh, Christians sharing each other's burdens. And we really experienced that firsthand when Cliff was diagnosed with heart disease. It was just such a relief to know that financial burden was going to be taken care of. CHM is the original and longest serving health cost sharing ministry. Get started today and check us out at chministries.org backslash budget.
hosting with me today is Anthony O'Neill, and we're taking your calls about life, money, business, or whatever you want to talk about. 888-825-5225. We're going to go to Jeff in Lexington, Kentucky. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? Hi, Christy. Doing good. I uh, actually got a question for you and Anthony. Uh, right. My first one for you is, are you going to be having a business boutique event uh, this year somewhere in the country? Yes, we are. It's going to be here in Nashville, Tennessee, and it is going to be in October. We are going to be releasing those dates and selling tickets soon. So thank you for asking. Yes, we're so excited. Just okay. finalizing the speakers. You coming, Jeff? Awesome. Uh, who told you? We're, well, my wife and I are planning on coming. Yeah, we uh, we went two years ago uh, to the one down there in Nashville, yeah. and that's the first time I'd ever heard Christy speak before. She's fine. And you are amazing. And oh, the story that you tell, your your testimony that you shared about your daughter was amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Thank I, you. Well, we'd love to have you. I tell you what, you stay on the line, and we'll have uh, Kelly get you and your wife tickets for whenever it is released. They're not even released yet, so you get the first tickets, Jeff. There you go. Well, all awesome. right. I mean, I'm about to call in, too. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How can Anthony and I help? What's your question? Um, Anthony, my question I've got for you uh, relates to student loan debt. Yeah. Uh, my wife and I have got some student loan debt that is in arrears, and we have not gotten like a letter from a debt collection agency in a couple of years. Last time we did, of course, it's got two amounts of money on there, the amount that was borrowed and the amount, the total amount that has interest and penalties on there. Yeah. When, when you get to the point in the baby steps where you're going to pay this off, will can that amount be negotiated? And if so, to where you only pay what you actually borrowed? And if it can, who do you negotiate that with? A debt collector or do you do that with the Department of the U.S. Department of Education? How long has it been in uh, default, man? I am not for sure, to be honest with you. I honestly don't know. Yeah, so that really all depends it, from there. If it's still in the hands of the federal government, uh, then no, they're not going to settle with you. Now, if they sold it to a collection agency, um, there, there's it's a 50-50. It, it's really up to them. Uh, sometimes they will settle. Uh, sometimes they will not settle uh, because uh, student loans are the hardest thing <laughs> uh, to pretty much settle. And you can't even file bankruptcy on them. So... My my answer is without knowing all of the particulars, it depends on who has the student loans at the time. Uh, if it is a collection agency, yes, a collection agency, you can settle depending on how far um, you are when it comes to delinquent. If you're only like a year, maybe two years behind and they're just collecting on behalf of the federal government, uh, probably not. They may give you like maybe you know, 5% off uh, to settle it. But if you're like five, 10 years behind and you're trying to settle it within one lump sum, um, I, I have seen some some companies go ahead and do that for you. But you just have to call the collection agency uh, who has your student loans. I will pull your credit report. Uh, the name will be on there. There should be a number attached to it. And just call them and ask them, hey, what are my options to resolve this matter? Uh, but the best bet, your best way to do that, Jeff, is to have a lump sum of cash on hand uh, when you get to that part in the baby step, I do not want you to jump there um, and skip over your smallest debts if you still have some. Okay. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Yes, sir. All right, yes, Jeff. Good luck. Good. Thank you. Thanks for calling. Appreciate you, man. All right. We are going to go to Bradley in Boston. Hey, Bradley, how's it going? Hi, Christine Anthony. Uh, thanks for answering my call. Yeah. Um, so recently I got a pretty significant um, 40% raise at work. Wow! Um, congratulations. And also, yeah, it was it was kind of surprising, but I'm I'm pretty happy with that, obviously. Um, and refinanced my fifty thousand dollars worth of student loans down to three percent, uh, three point seven percent, because okay. of the you know pretty good refinancing. So my question here is, you know, should I be prioritizing the loans or my retirement? Because at three point seven percent interest, that's like it's very small. You know, I mean, I'm obviously going to increase how much I'm putting on the loans, but do you think this should be kind of like a split? Um, yeah. So you have fifty thousand uh, yep. dollars on your loan payment. How long is your loan payments, man? Let me ask you that. How, what, ten how years. Your, ten I'm years. Probably. I just refinanced, so it'll be ten again. Yeah. So Bradley, ten per, ten years at three percent—that's a lot of money. I don't know what you mean by saying that. That's that's little of no money. 
uh, 3% well, I, over I didn't 10 mean years. It like that. Well, that's how <laughs> it sounded. Yeah. You know. what, is, what is that? Something, it's something like uh, it should be $11,000. Okay, yeah. In, I want you to if take I took the whole term. Yeah, so $11,000 times that and invest that into your interest, man. You're looking at almost a half a million dollars that you can get back just from that $11,000 if it was sitting in investments. So even if you're doing it just for a year, bro, any kind of penalty that you're paying for is not worth it. So, yes, I, I, what I'm telling you, how do you, Bradley? Uh, 23. Yeah, bro. Come on, man. Yes, bro. How much, how much is your raise? I know you oh, said 40%. Man. What's that in dollars? Uh, so that is uh, 84000 plus and then a commission of up to 36 and Okay. You, uh, okay, Bradley, listen. Oh this student loan's going to be gone before you know it yeah. if you live right. <laughs> Pretend like you didn't get that raise, Bradley. Pretend like you didn't get that raise. That's what I'm going to do, yeah. Yeah. And get, and get it out of here, and then you can invest all kinds of money. Bradley, you still living at home? No, no, on my own. Okay, good. Yeah, do exactly what Chrissy just said, man. She she jumped in before I can scream at <laughs> Sorry, you. Sorry, I get so, excited. <laughs> so, 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 so she saved you, man. You know what I'm saying? This is the problem that I have with young people. It's not you, Bradley, but this is the problem that I have with young people. We're, we're so quick to look at how do we get the money? How do we grow more money? How do we become wealthy? Rather than saying, hey, how do I create a solid foundation to build wealth on? Okay. And so I want you to knock out all your debt. So this way, like Chrissy said, man, when you're debt free, bro, you can go, go get the money and build it and let compound interest work, get into real estate, buy your car. You can do whatever you want to do, but I want you to do that on a solid foundation. Don't be building wealth and you owe people from the past, man. Nah, man, get get out of here. You do it. You're going to do this, Bradley. Are you going to do it? Are you going to live like you didn't get this race? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. It was more of where to put it, you know, because it's like. The, yeah. the retirement is where I'm like, was basically questioning it. Either yes, way, to- it's going into savings. Totally. You know what I mean? It's either going down debt or going into savings. I ain't spending it on other things. Bradley, how much you money do you have in savings right now? I'm curious. So that's the thing. At my prior, obviously 40% is pretty significant. At my prior, uh, it was about 60000 And due to the, it's pretty cost, high cost of living in Boston. Yeah. But how much money uh, do you so have I in had, your savings? I mean, I have a few thousand. You know, okay. How much debt do you have total? Six now. How much debt That's do you it. have total? Just that? That's it. That's cool. all. Yep. I own my car. I own everything else. Cool. Have you um, taken Financial Peace University from us? No, I haven't. I, c- I can tell. All right. I want you to stay on the line, and I want you <laughs> to um, rock out with Kelly. Kelly is going to connect you with Ramsey Plus. Uh, Christy and I is going to give that to you for free for one year. I want you to take the course uh, because um, I can tell you're new to new to the Ramsey organization and that's cool. I want you to do that and you'll see baby steps one through three. So technically right now, we only want you to have a thousand dollars in your savings account. So take that other $5,000, put that towards the $30,000 of student loans. You're down to 25. And like Chrissy said, man, you should be debt free within the next three to six months if you really work it right. Um, And so you could be debt free by the end of this year, building wealth, starting retirement. But I want to walk you through that process. Uh, And so we're going to give you a Ramsey Plus membership for free. You go in there, take financial Peace University and Dave, um, Rachel, and myself, uh, and Christy as well, and the rest of our personalities will teach you how to really set you up to win financially so you can retire well. Because I love the fact that at 23 years old, and I hope y'all high schools out here paying attention, not looking down at your cell phones, look, look at me and Christy right now, okay? Um, I, if we can get this at a young age, get this financial literacy at a young age, um, and really get this wisdom, we will be successful. I promise you, uh, we will be successful. So take Ramsey um, Plus. Uh, Kelly's going to give that to you. Thank you so much for calling in. And uh, f- to the young people listening right now, because, you know, we for those who listen on podcasts and um, not really can't really see what's going on, uh, we have a group of high school students here. And I love this, Christy, because I wish my teacher would have brought me to somewhere like this That's right. to get the education on how to start a business, how to uh, grow, uh, you know, our finances the correct way. And so y'all listen to your teacher. OK, <laughs> listen to your teacher because he going to make y'all true millionaires. TV ain't going to do nothing for y'all. All right. <laughs> Hip hop music ain't going to do nothing for you. Just entertain you. Listen to that guy that brought you here and to Christy and myself. <laughs> and we're going to help y'all become millionaires. Oh, uh, this is The Ramsey Show.
Christy Wright. You can follow along with everything I'm up to on Instagram at Christy B. Wright. I'm hosting today with my good friend, fellow Ramsey personality, Anthony O'Neill. And you can also follow him on Instagram at Anthony O'Neill. We love connecting with you guys. All right, Anthony, we've got a question from Blinds.com. Blinds.com's 100% satisfaction guarantee means that even if you mismeasure or pick the wrong color, they'll remake your blinds for free. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. Today's question comes from Liberty in Oregon. My husband and I just started FPU, and we want to pay off our debt fast. My husband recently asked if I would be willing to work some hours to contribute to our efforts. We have one child and are trying for another. Before we became parents, we decided I would stay home because having a full-time parent with our children was important to us. What's your opinion on family values versus paying off the debt quicker? Now, I'm really curious what you think about this, Anthony, because this is a values question. And when it comes to values, and Anthony and I give you guys advice on values, you're going to get our values. <laughs> and those may not be the same. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump no, in. No, 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 no. Go to you first. Go to you first. Okay, 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 okay. Go to you first. So... One of the things that that I actually like helping people do, and I talk about it in terms of life balance, but I love helping people figure out what their values are and then live their life according to them. For example, if you build a business and you look at other people, how they do their businesses and you structure yours the exact same, but it doesn't line up with your values, you're not going to enjoy your business because your business should reflect your values. Similarly, I, when we, we give you guys the baby steps, these are proven principles, but the speed at which you do them And your stage of life and what you're going through is going to be customized for you and your values. So when you say that you want to pay off your debt fast, Liberty, and you want to stay home because that's important to you, you're telling me two things you value and two things that are important to you. What I would say to you is you need to decide which is more important. Mm. Which is more important to you? Mm. Paying off your debt faster or staying home with your child in this season and then picking up the pace maybe when they're in preschool. I would argue, and I'm curious what you think here, AO, I would argue there is not a right or wrong answer here because it's your values. But I will tell you, if you do something that goes against your values, you're going to be anxious and tense and frustrated. If it's really important to you to stay home in this season when you have little teeny kids and you're maybe have another baby on the way, and then you go work, you're going to feel a lot of angst. And at the same time, if you value paying off that debt faster then being at home, you're going to feel antsy, like, hey, I need to do something. I need to do something. I need to contribute. I need to. And so I, I would say you have to decide which is more important to you. And it may be a blend. It may be something. That's why I love helping people start home-based businesses, because during nap time, you could be making some extra money on Etsy, and then you're doing both. So there are more options than you think. But I think it comes down to you deciding your values. What do you think, Ayo? When it comes to speed, not the baby steps, because the baby steps are proven, but the speed at which you do it. <sighs> I think the question should be asked to the couple, what is best for us moving forward? And I think the inside of that conversation, my personal opinion, we identify, okay, cool. Do we want to be out of debt so we can enjoy, do we want to be out of debt quicker so we can enjoy you being at home, not feeling any pressure, not feeling anything with the kids or do we mind having a little bit of pressure while you're at home? So are you saying the same thing I'm saying? Or are you? S- no. Okay. <laughs> no. Of course not. Of course not. Go on. So, Go on. <laughs> so what I'm saying is for me, I'm having a conversation and I'm trying to respectfully convince my wife if I'm in that situation. Um, babe, I want you to go back to work. I now. do not see that. I do. Really? I, I feel I like if, you, if your wife came to you, and, and I'm not saying there's a right or wrong, because right. you know, I'm pro, you doing what's right for you. Right. But if uh, knowing you yeah. and how... But now wait, I, how do I say this? <laughs> I wouldn't be in this situation. Okay. So yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying, I but you. if yeah. I was in this situation, uh, okay. I am asking my wife if she's saying, hey, I, I really want to be out of debt. I want to have freedom. And I'm thinking, I'm just thinking as a husband and as a father, you know, I want my wife to raise, I want my wife to be at home and to raise our kids, but I also want us to be at home and we're not, we're not, we're not, we don't have any pressure. We don't have any stress and we know finances can be stressful. 
Yeah. And so I would I would have the conversation. Now, my wife comes back and says, no, I want to stay home. Cool beans. I'm going to step up and I'm going to do everything I need to do uh, to eliminate the debt so my wife can't so stay if she home. said if she said it's important to me to stay home, yes. you would support that? Absolutely. That's cool. Absolutely. That's cool. Yeah, that, you're, we're, we're, we're tracking. We're on the same page. It's interesting, too, because when we talk about um, parenting, when we talk about working, we talk about women working and how and where and when they work and what that looks like. This is a deeply personal issue. And so I would just encourage every woman listening right now, every family listening right now, every parent listening, it is really important for you and your spouse to have a conversation where you are on the same page, even if you have to wrestle through it, even if you have to go see a counselor to work through it, to be on the same page with this because you can't look to people around you to tell you what you should do. You don't need to let your parents tell you what you should do. Your in-laws tell you what you should do. This is your life. It's your kids. It's your time. And I would say as a mom of three kids, age six and under, there is a season when they're little and that season is very short yeah. and goes fast. Yeah. And so uh, there are women that stay at home and think I'm crazy for working outside the home. There are women that work outside the home that, you know, they wish they were home. There's, there's so many different ways to do it. And you need to decide what's right for you mm -hmm. because this is your life. Yeah. And that's the only thing that matters is what is right for you and your family. It's a great question. It's a great discussion, AO, because it it, and you see it uh, across cultures. It varies across regions, the North versus the South versus yeah. the, you know, there's so many different ways to look at it. And there's a lot that affects it, but have that conversation with your spouse about what that looks like for you and how that affects how you approach the baby steps. And also let me say this too, Chrissy, because I want to make sure that we're saying is saying this in a way to where everyone hears us correctly. Chrissy said it. There's no right or wrong answer here. All right. So if you are a couple and you all have kids and both of you all are working to pay off debt, that is good for you and your family. Now, if you're one of the couples and one of you are saying, no, I want to go home and do this. See, Chrissy said you should do this. Anthony said you should do that. <laughs> Don't do that, because at the end of the day, you have to do what's best for you and your home. And as long as you and your spouse have a conversation, you all agree, stick to that. If you want to stay at home, mom, and, and the husband work or the wife works, doesn't matter. That's great for you. Um, but just make sure you hear us. We're not saying one is better uh, than the other. Well, and the, the thing that I would add, I said this passively, but this is what I've spent the last six years doing. That's the reason I love helping women start businesses from home. Yeah. It's not that that's what you have to do, but if you want to, during nap time, you have a hobby, you want to turn into some income, you have that's a skill good. set, education, experience, degrees, you want to do consulting or freelance work or have an online business. That's why I started Business Boutique. That's, That's why so I have the Business Boutique book and the and the events and my coaching. Because then it gives you a little bit more options of you're able to contribute financially if you want to and use I your like gifts. It. But also you get to stay home and work those hours around naps and what matters to you. The other thing I would add to this, AO, before we head out here is that, that this really applies whether we're talking about staying home or not. Because we get this question on how fast do I pay off my debt, mm -hmm. how gazelle intense I am. And, you know, I, I know people that they have cut out their cell phone bill, their cable bill. They haven't, you know, bought anything, not anything for and that's how they get out of debt really quick and that's cool but i'm gonna be honest when i had my debt-free journey i still had a cell phone yeah you know what i mean and and Me i too. didn't i didn't go on vacations and stuff but you decide the intensity that's right for you yeah and how much how much you want to go all in for it because it's your life and, and your financial journey absolutely I, I saw someone say something yeah if you're going to get out of debt you need to uh, end your gym membership i said if i was in debt right now i'm not ending my gym membership that's just me you have to do what's best for you. You can get gazelle intense. You can get gazelle focused, but your journey may look different from someone else's journey. As long as your mind is set that I am going to become debt free by this time. That's the main focus of what we here at Ram Solutions are are really suggesting. Have a goal. A goal is specific with a deadline and do not be lazy with it. Have a strong, specific time of when you are going to get out of debt and you and your spouse or you by yourself and you're single, focus and do everything you need to do to hit that day. That, that date. So good. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Pace yourself for the journey. This is The Ramsey Show.
We want to transform so many lives that disruption spreads like wildfire across our country. Imagine a world where it is weird to have a student loan instead of everyone assuming that that's the only way to get an education. Imagine a world where the majority of people pay cash for their cars. That's weird. <laughs> Imagine a world where credit cards are the cigarette of the financial industry. Imagine being a part of causing that level of disruption with the work you do every day. At Ramsey Solutions, that's why we have a thousand people at our company working together to create digital products and services to help people transform their lives with the goal of disrupting the toxic money culture that exists in America today. If you want to join us on that crusade, we are currently on the hunt for many software engineers with expertise in Ruby on Rails, Java, C Sharp, and front end technologies. I don't know what any of that means, but if you do, <laughs> you can apply. Or if you're a UX designer, SEO, and content marketing specialist, we'd love to talk with you. Find out about all the available jobs by texting Work That Matters to 33789. That's work that matters, all one word, to 33789 to find out about all of our open opportunities. All right, we are going to go to James in Miami, Florida. Hey, James, how's it going? Uh, better than I deserve. Thank you very much for taking my call. Sure. How can Anthony and I help? I am, well, my wife and I are looking to buy our first home. And my question is, should we be as gazelle intense and attack the student loan debt first or save for a large down payment. What's hmm. the situation now? Give us some, some numbers of the debt and the... So we, we just paid off um, a large amount of debt with credit cards, and the only debt we have left is her school loans. Then it's about 335000 Oh. So my, my, my question is... Attorney. Well, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. Um, I was about to say she has to be an attorney. Attorney, a doctor. Exactly. So we we, we yeah. watch her show. We watch every YouTube, you know, every YouTube channel, every podcast. Where we're pretty up to date on all the content. So yep. we're just trying to kind of get some more transparency on. What's her either, income? What's y'all's you know, income, uh, James? Um. So mine fluctuates. I, I'm self-employed. I own my own company. Okay. She's, you know, salary. Yeah. Um. But we're, let's just say, as an average, about one hundred and fifty. One hundred and fifty thousand dollars. What's the house situation now? Are y'all renting? Yes, we rent. Okay. Okay. Um, James. So since she you say you, you're already up to speed on on our content, I think you already know what what I'm gonna tell you, right? Mm -hmm. Um. And it's sad. And let me just be real. Uh, yeah, I, I hate the fact that I can't sit here and tell you to go get a house. Uh, I, it, right. it bothers me that I have to sit here and tell you, no, I want you to pay off this $335,000 student loan debt. And let's also be real. It's going to take you some years to pay this off with $150,000 of combined income. Um, uh, and here's why I'm telling you I, I do not want you to get a mortgage right now. It's because this debt... Um, when we did our millionaire study, okay, we realized uh, that they did, they have a paid for mortgage, but then number two, they had a pay, they paid off all their student loans before they even paid off their mortgage, um, before they even got in the house, to be honest. And so for me, what I want to do is I want to figure out how can we get this $335,000 knocked out within the next three to five years. This simply means we gotta get the income up. Mm -hmm. We need we need to figure out some way to help your business to make more profit. Maybe Chrissy can help us out with that direction. Uh, but then also, your wife went to school, and she. Sh I mean, with this kind of debt, I mean, what what kind of law does she do? Um, she's in like the civil litigation. You know, she 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 makes great money, and yeah. you know, it's my it's uh, you kind of touched it. it my business fluctuates. We, yeah. What's your business? This year. So we, I own a sign company. Okay. Sign company. And um, this year, and exactly. Um, the reason why I was able to kind of knock off, or we were able to knock off the credit card debt was we do a lot of the political industry. Oh. Mm -hmm. So because, and, you know, this this scenario may be completely different in 2024 with the, with the new election. 
But um, for 2022, 2024, every, odd, or every even number is a general and a primary election. So there's going to be more volume versus exactly odd even. Um, so yeah, but, guess, J- but James, I got to jump know, in here. Your, your business is not based on every two years, right? Like your sign company is not based on politics because that's not a good business model. So wh- who's your other target customers? What is, how long have you had your business? Who else do you sell to, market to? It can't just be wait, yeah. wait until the next election. Five years. I've been in business five years, and you know, if it's not political, then we focus on commercial. Okay. So business to business. Cool. Um, you know, we, we exactly we do retail signs. You know, all, all signs, printing, advertising, all that arena. Cool. Okay. So, what is your business generating a, a year? Like, what are you profiting? Because at one fifty, are you saying your wife is doing about seventy five, and you're doing like the other seventy five, or is it more like one hundred? And uh, during your off years, you're bringing in like fifty. Like, what, what's what's the breakdown here? I would say, yeah, I, I may have um, shorted myself a little bit. It's anywhere from like fifty to seventy five. Okay. Depending on you know, last two years ago, it was it was right around there, seventy five. Okay. Net. Net. So you know, like a one fifty gross, something like that. Okay. And your wife is doing about the same. You said. Yeah, she's okay. at, you know, and, and, you know, her industry faces, you know, bonus and, and things of that nature. And I don't want to kind of get too detailed, but, yeah. you know, her, her salary is, is a little bit different than mine mm-hmm. because she's got, you know, a solid employer and they do bonuses and, you know, well, there's always room for uh, raises. Yeah. Well, there's room for raises, but you control your business. Yes. I mean, you, you have, do, yeah. you have a lot more levers to pull and it's not a perfect formula of like, there's buttons you need to push and you're just not pushing them. I know it's not that simple in business, but I will just encourage you that because you and your wife make a good income, it would hypothetically, James, be easy to get a little comfortable and not have that fire under you. And I want you to get a fire under you. Yeah. I want you bringing in over a hundred thousand. Yeah. I want you getting this business up and going. You're in a good business. It's a proven business. It can get there. It might just be look at you uh, maximizing what you've been doing in the past that has worked for you and trying some new things. And if things are, if the industry is down because it's a year after politics or because of COVID or because of whatever, people aren't buying it, you know, you got to figure out what's, what's going on, but it might be time to pivot or try something new or try something online or try a different stream of revenue. But we're not just, I just don't want you to sit tight and just wait till the next election. I don't want you to accept that this is the most your business can do. I want you to set some really aggressive goals in your business revenue and in your personal income because because you own your own business, you can do that. Yeah. And, and I just want to encourage you there. If you will stay on the line, James... We will have uh, Kelly send you a copy of Entree Leadership, great business book by Dave Ramsey. It is our playbook of how he built this business from a card table in his living room. And I'll tell you, James, regardless of what's going on in the market, what you need is what I hope you have, and that's tenacity, yeah. perseverance, persistence, and just a will not take no for an answer attitude where you are rethinking the business and looking for ways to get new business and looking for ways to get new streams of revenue. Uh, I want to hear that in your voice. And then when you do that and you get that income up, you'll be able to attack this debt that we're talking about so much faster. Yeah. I mean, and here's, here's the truth. I mean, if we look at the numbers, you got 150 in debt, you're making 150, you're saying three, three something in debt, well, 350, 350 in debt. I'm sorry. You got 150 of, of income. I'm thinking if you really do this math well here, Okay, you're looking at about maybe five years, you and your wife can honestly be out of debt if you really aggressively go after it. I know that seems like a long time, but man, the average person, it takes them anywhere between 12 to 20 years uh, to pay off their student loans that are right around $38,000. And so with the 150 income, what I'm saying is figure out how do we spend 50 grand a month, okay, to go towards the student loan debt. And then if you get your income up, like Christy said, you mean I, a year, you said 50 grand a month. That feels oh, very aggressive. Yes, that's very aggressive. <laughs> Thank you, Christy. But 50 grand a year, uh, man, you'll be out of debt here very, real, real quick in five years or five years, man. I've been here for six and I, I feel like it's only been like two years. Uh, so I'm telling you right now, man, you can do it. The, I business, the business is your key to get there. I'm telling you, James, you have got, you got an ace in your pocket. You got to turn the dial up on that one. That's going to be your ticket to get there. I want to thank producer James Childs and associate producer Kelly Daniel and my co-host Anthony O'Neill. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, this is Kelly, associate producer for The Ramsey Show. 
Did you know that over 16 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? And a lot of those people listen on one of our 600 plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, head to DaveRamsey.com slash show. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm Christy Wright, your host today. Along with me today is Anthony O'Neill. Yes. You can find both of us on Instagram at Christy B. Wright and at Anthony O'Neill. We are both author, speakers, and Ramsey personalities, and we are here for you. So give us a call, 888 825 We can answer your questions about money, about business, about life. Whatever you want to talk about, we are here for you. All right, let's go to the phones. We've got Cindy in Los Angeles. Hey, Cindy, how's it going? Good. How about you, Christy? Good. How can Anthony and I help? Hi, my question is, when is the right time to invest? All right, take it away, Ao. Yeah, that's a good question, Cindy. Um, Why do you ask the question? I'm curious. Where are you at in your financial journey? Financial journey. I paid off my paid off my student loans last year, okay. and um, right now I'm trying to pay off my car. Um, I got myself a gave myself a deadline um, May 22nd. Okay, that's good. You was listening cool. into the phone calls. That's great. Um, how much debt do you have left outside of a mortgage? So, what's your consumer debt looking like? The total. Um, actually, I don't have a mortgage. I was wanting to get a home, but I figured that paying off my car was the first goal. Absolutely. Um, I'm a travel nurse, so I'm like, um, just paying off my debt. I don't have, um, right now I'm just staying with family with my um, traveling career. Okay, That's cool. Awesome. How much is on your car right now then? Um, 30, 30,000. 30K? What kind of car are you driving, Cindy? <laughs> infinity. <laughs> You're driving an infinity. That must be like a 2025, huh? <laughs> oh man you bought it just, you know you live and you learn and i had yeah. so many cars and you know just building i'm like no i just want to get out of debt I'm i feel you i feel you hey so i know traveling nurses make real good money especially out on the road because you don't have to pay taxes on your uh, travel expenses and stuff like that so what would you say you make what's your weekly right now um that you're making a week uh weekly it would be um like three thousand so you're making twelve thousand dollars a month after taxes because you can pay minimum tax when you're traveling. You're doing about about eighty five hundred with what you're seeing a month. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so here's the thing. Um, I want you to pay off the car. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't want you doing any investing because it all depends on what company you're with when it comes to travel nurses. Inc. So I don't want you to pick one particular company uh, because you may switch uh, with different assignments. So I would definitely say just going ahead, pay off the car, get very aggressive with that. If you're living with family, you should be able to have this car paid off within three months. All right. I want right. you to get very, very aggressive with that. Then after that, um, do you do you only travel and use one company to find an assignment? Uh, for your traveling nursing, or do you use multiple companies to help you find different assignments? Um, one company. Cool. So, do they offer a four hundred one k? They off. They do. I actually looked at the four hundred one k last night. Okay. Cool. Is it is it a Roth? It's a Roth. And do they match? And they do match. Perfect. So, as soon as you get done from there, what I want you to do is put three months, three months aside into an um to an in the savings account because it'll be easy for you to get a job in a nursing field. So, once you get done within the next three months paying off the car, then I what what I want you to do is go ahead and just set aside three months of your average expenses. Um, so just look and just gauge as far as in if you're going to do an Airbnb when you're traveling. What do you need to live for three months? And I'm I'm thinking for you maybe ten fifteen grand. Then from there, then that's when I want you to start investing and go ahead and use the uh, 401k Roth and so when it comes to investing Roth first okay Roth beaches a match beats a match Matt beach beats I'm saying beach uh, beats, <laughs> I want to go to the beach I know I want to go to the beach too <laughs> and then a match beats uh, a traditional so Roth first tradi- I mean match next then a traditional all right but right now 
Do the first two things first. Pay off your car, get a fully funded emergency fund, then start investing. So great question, Cindy. Yeah, uh, thanks for calling. I love travel and nursing. Anthony, you know a lot about it. First of all, that's impressive. Yeah. You're, you're, you, know the, you know the deal, the lingo, all that. Hey, real quick for, for everyone listening right now, do a quick recap on why we tell people to pay off your debt before you invest because we get this question all the time yeah. and it's a major hang up where people feel, oh, I'm, I'm leaving money on the table. My employer offers this, that, and the other. Talk a little bit about this focused intensity of one thing at a time and why the baby steps work the way that they do. I think it's a good reminder for people. Absolutely. You know, I'll come from my personal story. You know, when I was focused on just one thing, paying off my debt and baby step uh, number two, um, lining up all your debt from smallest to largest using the debt snowball method, um, I was able to focus solely on that. Studies show, Christy, that when you are in debt and you're also trying to invest, you only invest about one to two percent. So it's not really a lot of money. Right. So if you could keep that one or two percent, put that on top of your debt and just get very focused with that, you're going to get out of debt quicker. Then we teach you're going to set aside an emergency fund to present to prevent you from going back into debt. So this way, when you start investing 15 percent of your income, you're not worried about going backwards. What we're trying to do is keep people going forward. The problem that we see in the world today is that they'll pay a little bit of debt. Uh, they go over here and invest a little bit. Then they'll get back into a whole bunch more debt. Then they'll come back over here and start investing a little bit. Then what they'll do is take out of their investment to go pay off their loans. And that's not what we want you to do. We want you to focus on one thing, create a solid foundation for you to build on. Then you're going to create a layer on top of that foundation, which is, which is an emergency fund. Then from there, we're going to create um, some revenue to invest into our future. So that way, when we do retire, we can retire with peace and with joy and with freedom and enjoy our retirement. Um, and so that's one thing why we really, really teach that foundation is because we want you to have something strong to stand on, not something rocky. I think people underestimate the power of focus yeah. and just focusing on one thing at a time. They think I'm going to do all these things simultaneously. And when you try to do a million things simultaneously, you feel scattered because yeah. you are. Yeah. And so you don't feel like you're making any progress. Do you know that research shows that the most motivating thing for human beings, it doesn't matter your personality style, the most motivating thing is not rewards or a pay raise or even words of affirmation or recognition. The most motivating thing is seeing progress. Absolutely. When you see progress, you want to make more progress. If you eat salads for a week and you don't see the scale go down, you want to go back to eating cookies and yes. pizza. Yes. But if you see the scale go down, you get motivated. What else can I do? I'm going to drink more water. I'm going to work out again. Seeing progress, whether it's with a weight loss goal, with a business goal, with your debt snowball, when you see progress, it propels you forward to make more progress. So that's the reason we love to help you all have focus on one thing at a time. When you focus on one thing at a time, you see progress there, which propels you forward. You know, I, one of the things I see with women starting businesses, Anthony, the, part of the downside of having such ease to start a business is women start like 15. Yes. side businesses yeah, yeah. and I'm like what do you do they're like I do hair and walk dogs and I do landscaping and I have a boutique and I make hair bows and I'm also accountant and on the weekends I make barbecue yeah it's almost uh, like I don't know what you do it's almost like our newest personality John Deloney I don't know if y'all know who he is <laughs> he he's scattered all over the place he wants to be strong he wants to be fit he wants to be this and I'm like I'm like John just focus on one thing bro <laughs> just focus on one thing and he's in the studio we're just giving you know, him a hard time giving him a hard can, time because we have the mic Microphone today. That's right. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's good. Focus <laughs> creates momentum, creates more progress. Yes. This is the Ramsey Show. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices, and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. Today is 
Anthony O'Neill, and we're taking your calls about life, business, and of course, as always, money. Give us a call, 888-825-5225. We're going to go to the phones. We've got Mason in Louisville. Hey, Mason, how's it going? Uh, how are you all? Good. What's your qu- question for Anthony or myself? Okay. Well, I'm 19 years old, and I'm currently on a gap year pursuing um, kind of my dreams. Um, I have a little LinkedIn store network that's been acquired through my business and also working throughout high school and you know, working multiple jobs. And um, I was uh, wondering, I have about 20000 of that invested between mutual funds, individual stocks, and sneakers with my business. But I was wondering what I should do with that the other 20000 all right, you're cutting out a little bit. Can you give me those numbers again? In the very beginning, you said you've got how much money that you got from where? Uh, sorry, a little over $40,000. Okay, $40,000. And, and 20 of that is invested in individual stocks, mutual funds, and sneakers. Because that's my little business that I run. Well, it's not little, Mason. It's not little. It doesn't sound like it is to me. Let's just cut out the word little. <laughs> and then tell me, tell me a little bit more about your situation. You're in a gap year. What, do you have any debt? What, what else is going uh, on? No, I do not have any debt. Um, yes, I'm on a gap year. And right now, my sneaker business has gone to uh, depths that it has never been before because it's currently my full-time job. And uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to do about school. This is kind of you know, a call and air to see what I can do with this year. Yeah. How many years have you had this business? Uh, I actually started it in the sixth grade, and every year it became more increasingly, um, you know, I became more invested in it. Wow. That's so Sixth good. grade. That's yeah. crazy. That's awesome. Hey, man, you sharp, bro. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me just be real. You, you, you sharp. I mean, you, you real Thank sharp. You. I appreciate that. All right. So let me help you out with the language here. And Christy can maybe even help me with this as well. When you say invested, um, that's money that you have invested with getting a return on as far as in like interest. Now, your sneaker business is not an investment. You know, that's, that's your business. Okay? Unless there's something we're missing here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like. Um, well. A lot of these things I consider investments because uh, most of them over time appreciate value. And some of them I've turn on for a year, maybe two years, and some of them even go up five, ten dollars a week. So I consider those to be as investments, but they're technically not really investments. Yeah, yeah. So let, let's say you you're, you have a sneaker business, and then let's say you have other funds invested. Um, in, into mutual funds and to single stocks. All right. And then the business part, I totally get, I mean, cause all, if you're in business, you're in it to make profit. And so I totally understand your perspective on that part. Um, at your age, uh, just to make sure I heard you correctly, cause you're going in, you were going in and out. You're in a gap year of college. Are you going back to college? Number one. And number two, how are you paying for college? Are you using scholarships, grants? Are you cash flowing? What are you doing? Or are you taking out student loans? Well, I do plan on going back to college. I kind of use this year also to figure out what I wanted to go into. And I've narrowed it down a little bit more, but I still haven't decided completely. Okay. But I will be attending a community college, my local community college. And I haven't decided if I'll be staying at home with my family or if I'll be renting an apartment with somebody. And are but we taking out student I, loans or how are you how are you paying for it? Um, definitely some scholarships, but there probably will be some student loans. Okay. But I think every year it's only 4000 there, so I plan on paying it off with one a job as well. Yeah, so there's no point of paying it off when you have $40,000 in cash right now. So for me, yeah. I'm going to cash out those single stocks, and I'm going to put that on top of the $20,000 that you have left cash liquid, and then I'm just going to pay for the rest of my college up front cash okay um mm-hmm. I, i'm cool with you keeping keeping some of it inside your mutual fund because if it's only going to cost you four grand to go to a community college you really only need eight grand and then from there we need to figure out what are you going to do for the next two years are you going to an in-state school that's that because that's going to run you in kentucky yeah right at about eight to ten thousand dollars if you go to an in, in-state school so that 20 grand that you have right there 
I hear it in your voice. I hear it. You know, you're 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 a young man trying to make some money. You know, trying trying to get this bag real quick. And I understand it. Yes, sir. But but what I want you to do is set yourself up to win long term. OK. And yes, the sir. average person says this, Mason, that, hey, I'm going to pay it off within two to three years after I graduate. That same average person takes them 12 years to pay it off. Mm -hmm. OK. And so what I'm saying is if you already have the funds up front, here's the best investment you can make. That's into yourself. Yes, sir. At 19 I years old, oh. investing into your I wish you could see me on YouTube because I'm pointing out my brain. Investing into this right here, that's your greatest asset. Not sneakers, not the stock market, not anything else. You are your greatest asset. If you can get this mind, all the wisdom and knowledge that it needs to be productive on the business side, man, man, stocks can't compete with you. You know, sneakers can't mm -hmm. compete with you. So what I'm going to say is, to go cash out your single stocks, pull that stuff out, bro, and pay cash for college. If you do that, bro, your sneaker business gonna it's gonna take off. That's that's the thing that people have to keep in mind, Anthony. Is it's not either or. You're 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 making an investment in both. This yeah. you you are doing awesome in the sneaker business because of just grit and tenacity and scrappiness. And you're a go getter that started in the sixth grade, which is crazy and awesome. You get some actual business principles and education and training and strategy. You're, you're going to be challenged to look at your business in a new way, and it's going to get it's going to open up tons of doors of growth and opportunity because you got that outside perspective it's like we we kicked off this morning talking about or this afternoon talking about getting outside advice from people that yes. are experts in their space or know more than you it's going to help you take it to that next level where you're not just winging it the whole time you actually have got a little bit different layer of sophistication in running your business and at some point if you want to scale mason you want to grow a team you're going to need to know how to be a leader yep. and all that good stuff so that will help you do that i love love that advice all right yep. let's go to emma in chicago hey emma how's it going good how are you good what's your question for anthony and i um, so my husband and I, we have started this journey of going debt free um, very early on in 2020, right before the pandemic hit. Unfortunately, uh, during that time, I lost my job. And then after that, we work on my second baby. Uh. So uh, we use part of our saving to pay some of our debt, like mostly credit cards. And right now we are to the point where uh, we do not have the six months, you know, savings. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like we should stop. Mm -hmm. um, we should stop opening that debt until I get a job. And of course, my husband, he's not on um, board with me. He really wants to just keep going. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have been blessed that, you know, um, we're able to live comfortably with one salary and even able to save that thousand dollars every month. But I just feel like I, you know, we should stop right there yeah. uh, until I get a job and then continue uh, with our, you know, with our, with real, our goals. So, real quick, Emma, because we're about to go to break. How much debt do you have left together? Real quick. Okay, so student student loans is is the highest. Um, that we're not even going to tackle that right yeah. now. This is about. What, um, but what's your total? How much? Two hundred twenty thousand. Two hundred twenty k. Okay, cool. And how yeah. much is your husband making right now in his job? Um, he makes about one hundred forty. One hundred and forty thousand. Yes. Oh yeah, y'all need to stop that. Yeah, don't don't yeah. stop that. Keep going, Emma. Um, and, then, I, and then and then on on the on the on the on the, um, on the, uh, the credit cards, uh, I think we have about eight thousand dollars less. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that's cool. I mean, one hundred and forty thousand dollars income. Uh, you guys um, renting or do you have a mortgage payment? We do have a mortgage. We have a condo. How much is your mortgage payment? Uh, right now, everything all together is about uh, seventeen hundred. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, so here's my thing, Emma. You guys are making good income. The, com the average combined household in America today is at fifty-eight thousand dollars. And so you all are not just double. Y'all are double plus some. Uh, so you don't need to pause nothing. What, what y'all need to do is get on a clear budget and see how do you all continue moving forward with you uh, losing your income. But hey, don't pause. Keep going. Y'all, y'all got a lot to do. Okay. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show.
A recent survey said that over 64% of Americans changed their spending habits in 2020. Plan to have a pandemic-proof budget that you can that can protect you from another year of impulse buying and spending more than you make. Reset your money habits by getting the Ramsey proven and easy to use cash management systems, the Starter Envelope System. For a very limited time, you can get our famous Starter Envelope System for only $5. If you're constantly going overboard in a certain category, maybe your food or clothes budget, then take cash out for the amount you've budgeted for and stick it in an envelope. When you shop for that category, only use what's in the envelope. Once the money is gone, it's gone. So you can't overspend. How easy is that? The starter envelope system will help you manage your money and keep your budget in check. Plus, we are marking it down to only $5 to help you get back on track. Pick one up for yourself, family, and friends while they are 72% off. Mm. Visit us at DaveRamsey.com backslash store today. That's a deal, Anthony. Yeah, listen, I'm going, to buy, yeah, I'm going to buy me a few of those tonight. Five dollars. I got, I got some members who uh, family members who go over their, their budget all the time. So I've been reading my kids, the juniors books, juniors adventures yeah. book. And yeah. there's the one about, um, you know, junior, the careless at the carnival and he's got his little envelopes and he goes and he spends all the money on all the games and then doesn't have any money for the tilt whirl or whatever it is. And it's funny cause I, I feel like my son's getting it. And then we, we went to target the other day because he wanted to buy something and he had his little envelope. There you and go. He picked out something that was more than that was in his little envelope. Yeah. And I said, well, that's, you don't have enough money for that. Right. And he said, well, well, let's just like, I just, I just want to get it anyway. I said, right. But see that envelope? You don't have enough money for that. And he goes, well, where's your purse? I go, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. He goes, well, your purse is right there. What about yep. in your wallet? What's in your wallet? I was like, nothing for you. Nothing for you. All right. We are going to Giovanni in New York, New York. Hey, Giovanni, how's it going? Hey guys, it's going good. Great to be on the show. What's up, AL? Just found your show recently too at the table. You oh, guys man. Some really good stuff. Thank you, bro. Thanks. Awesome. What's going on? No, no problem. So my wife and I just got married in January. Congrats. Before yeah. getting married, thank you. I appreciate it. Before getting married, I had no debt and about 11000 which served as my emergency fund. After marriage, my wife and I had like a serious conversation about our finances, and we realized that my, my, my wife had about $44,000 in debt. Okay. Um, we started the program, and we're down to 39000 so we've paid about five down together so far. I know following your principles, we should throw the 10000 safe straight at the debt. However, I'm wondering if I should still do that, even though I'm in the process of transitioning between jobs. I'm currently joining the New York City Fire Department. I'm going to be in the academy between May and September. So I'm wondering if I should keep that 11000 as a cushion for now until I graduate from the academy and I have some job security. Uh, good, good question, That's man. Number one, question. yeah. Congrats on, on marriage, bro. Yeah. Um, and Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. I, I love that. But uh, let, let, let's talk here. What does your wife do for a living? So she works with children in um, group homes. Okay. Uh, she has a psychology degree. So she actually, in the future, wants to further education and open up uh, a cl her own clinic. What, what's um, her income? So together, her and I both, we bring home, uh, well, she brings home 3200 a month, and I'm bringing home about three a month. Okay. So 3200 a month, and you bring home about three, so you're bringing about $6,200 a month. But then you're about to transition and go down to $3,200 a month, correct? Um, Are you going to be well, making money no, while you're in the I mean, academy? Yes, I'll be making around the same while I'm in the academy. Oh, I guess yeah. it's just the pressure of yeah. potentially, like, failing out which i don't want to think about obviously but yeah. there's always that option That's, there's there's always what ifs giovanni there's always what ifs you could we yeah. could we, could the sky fall i mean you know like there's always what ifs but we don't make decisions yeah. based on fear the fact that you've got that stable income you're good to go and in fact i think that if you kept that cushion you might even get a little bit more comfortable yep uh yeah a ao take it away i know no, no. Go. chrissy i mean you're hitting right on the money man i'm taking that ten thousand dollars bro and i'm putting it on there that's gonna leave me at 29k if you all are making sixty two hundred dollars a month what's your mortgage payment right now are you rent payment yeah our mortgage is uh 1461 but we also pay hoa i'm trying to do quick math in my head it's a, it comes out about 1640 okay so about 1640 and is this 6200 dollars? is that gross or is that net um that's that's take home that's net i believe okay so so yeah. you guys are still bringing 5k yeah man you could be debt free in the next 
uh, five to six months if you are really attacking and work that budget. I would definitely get on every dollar. Uh, I would go over to RamseyPlus.com right now, uh, download the Every Dollar app, get on a very strict bud budget, Giovanni, and just figure out, okay, how do we work the debt snowball? Now, um, I agree with Christy. I don't want you to get too comfortable at all, but if you want to take it maybe just a notch down a little bit while you're in transition, I'm okay with that because you two are young. You're already putting $10,000 towards it, leaves you with twenty nine dollars you're still bringing in six to two hundred dollars right after that you're looking at about 50 what's that 4800 bucks that you have left I, w I would really put about a good three grand towards this debt um, and, and get real aggressive with it while you're in school that leaves you with a cushion of about a grand to go ahead and play around and pay some utility bills some food stuff like that but right now i don't want y'all being too comfortable bro i want you to attack this while you're young while you have the resources to do it because you do not know what the future holds and i would rather you get your new job get your good career your 100 percent debt free and get your three to six months of your savings back into your account and then you start investing into your future so th those are my two cents bro but congratulations Congrats on the marriage, and I'm excited about y'all's future. Yeah, and I would say stay on the line. Let's have uh, Kelly give you a membership, you and your wife, to Ramsey Plus, where you can get on a budget that, like we're talking about. You can watch the lessons, uh, go through Financial Peace University. That's going to set your marriage off on the right track financially. I want to point out something, Anthony, Yeah. that I see a lot of times in these types of calls. Uh-huh. Uh, and I'm not saying you're doing this, Giovanni, except I'm saying you might be doing this, Giovanni. When, so when, she's saying you're doing it, here's, Giovanni. Here's what I see. Here's what I see. It's just a maybe. <laughs> I'm just going to throw this out there. When you have two people get married and one of them has been very financially responsible and they're very proud of the fact that they are debt free and have $11,000 in savings. Yes. And you have someone else come into the marriage and they've got some debt. The person that has been responsible before marriage sometimes has a hard time letting go of that money. That's good. Because... It's a source of pride. Yep. Look what I did. I've yep. been responsible. And now in an instant, it's going to all of a sudden, all that hard work's going to have the window. But here's the thing. When you put a ring on it, it's y'all's money. It's y'all's debt. Mm. It's y'all's goals. Mm. It's y'all. I'm mm. a Tennessee girl. I'm going to say it 500 times. Together, this is your money, your debt, your goals, and your future. So I while, while I think what he's saying is valid about the concerns about transition, I would say there may be a little bit something else going on below the surface of like, oh, but I worked so hard to save this 11000 You mean I just got a her debt? You know, and that's, so, that's, that's a thing. So can I play the devil's advocate here? Yeah, let's have it. Key word here, America, play. <laughs> Okay. Too late. They've already torn you up. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play devil's advocate. So let's say I am the man and I get married and she does have, you know, thirty thousand dollars in debt and I got forty thousand dollars that I've been saving up, mm -hmm. you know, to go towards my mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. You're trying to tell me I'm supposed to give that up because I got married and she didn't have her, you know, her her business in place. Yes. Finances in place. Yes. So all my hard work over yes. the last five years. Yes. I give it up. A thousand be because percent. Because my wife yep wasn't financially good when I met her. If you're not ready to be a team, don't get married. <laughs> and let me tell you, I will be super I transparent right here. Uh -oh. I will be super transparent. This was Matt and I's story. I got, I Who had the money? Matt. And you had the debt? I, I like Matt. No, no, no. Listen, no, no, no. Let me, like let me finish. Matt. I paid off my debt. Are you ready for this? <laughs> okay. I paid off my last debt, my last car payment one week before he proposed. He had had the ring, had planned the date to propose already. He already had this plan. He didn't, we didn't talk to finances okay. until we got engaged. For real? So he didn't know. I mean, he knew I was paying off my debt. Like that way. Yeah, yeah. I was transparent yeah, about yeah. that. I, I became debt free. We had a... Um, uh, was a, we went hiking and yeah. we had that like hiking date planned yeah. and he proposed at the place that we had met where we'd run in, trail running. And I want you to know when we got married, which this is a lesson for you, America, what a good man I had when we got married and he had a, a great savings account, been a responsible debt free, did not have any question about how we paid for that wedding. Matt Wright paid for that wedding. And he said, Matt, and cut I, that check? tears coming down my face. And he said, ah. it's, no, he said, it's our money. Ooh. He never, never held it over my head. Never said you should have done whatever. Be that kind of man. It's our money. Be I like a, Matt. Be a good man like Matt Wright. I'm dancing <laughs> for Matt right now. This yeah. is The Ramsey Show. <laughs>
Christy Wright. You can find me on Instagram at Christy B. Wright. And hanging out with me today is Anthony O'Neill at Anthony O'Neill on Instagram. We are answering your questions about life, money, business, or whatever you want to talk about. 888 825 We're going to go to Jennifer in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Hey, Jennifer, how's it going? Hey, guys, how are you? Good. How can Anthony and I help? Well, I have a what would Dave do question. Um, okay. <laughs> so, well, and here's the situation. I recently got my master's in social work, and after two years, I finally got a job in my field using my degree. Um, and I just was given an option today. Currently, I do nine months where I work nine, I work in schools nine months a year, and then I have the three months off in the summer. Um, and at I was like 37000 and $11 is what I would make. Um, I just found out that if I were to work 12 months out of the year, I could make $48,000, $49,000 a year. So there's a $12,000 difference just by working an extra three months. Now, the commute time would still be the same. I'm still commuting about two hours a day total. The caveat, and here's the key, is I'm a single mom and have been um, all my life. Well, all of my son's life, I have, you know, and so it's like I'm kind of torn. Do I work the nine months and have the summers off to spend with him and just really try to pay off the debt with the lower income? Or do I take the other, uh, the higher income and sacrifice time with my son? How how um, how much debt do you have? Um, 70000 mm. How old is your son? All student loans. Um, he's 10. And what time do you get off work in the um, on the school day or summer day? Well, like, what's your schedule like? It, it varies. Um, if I'm working in the schools, I can be done when the schools are done, and then at the hour to meet home. So I'd be done like two thirty. So I'd be home like three thirty. Um, but if I'm not working in the schools, if I'm working at the office, I'm getting done at four o'clock and not getting home until five o'clock, five thirty, depending on traffic. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna. This is another one. We were talking about this earlier today, which is why I'm asking a lot of questions because this is a super personal issue. But I'm gonna tell you what I would do. I would absolutely do it. You're talking about a massive increase in income, short term sacrifice, long term reward. And I will, being transparent here, my mom was a single mom. And she took me to her cake shop with her. I, I mean, I spent more time at the cake shop, you know, with, with her employees than I did my friends a lot of my childhood. And I turned out fine. And, and, I, and I know I'm not the only person, but I just, I just want to encourage single moms out there. Don't be sorry for the struggle. You're, you're, you're not harming your kids by the struggle, by being a team, saying we're going to sacrifice together. This is what we do. This is how life is. We're in it together. We're, we're a team. Your kids aren't going to make it uh, despite the struggle. They're going to make it because of it. I am who I am because of what mom and I went through together. And so I just, I think that you have, uh, you have so much potential to get out of debt so much faster with these three months in the summer, a few years that you could make so much more progress. So I would say I lean heavily towards, yes, take that extra income, work those hours. And you're not talking about you're getting off at seven o'clock at night. You don't see them. You still would have an opportunity to see them. So, but again, it's, I have to be very cautious when I'm telling women what you should do with your children. That is super personal, Jennifer. And so I, w I want you to hold all this loosely as this is another woman to woman saying, this is what I would do, but I'm not you right. and it's not my child. Right. And that's a very uh, personal decision, but I think that, that the sacrifice you're talking about a few months in the summer for the long-term payoff of getting out of debt so much faster and that much income in a short amount of time, in my opinion, is absolutely worth it. Yeah. That's me. Ayo? So I'm going to echo what Christy said, and I'm going to break it down from a financial perspective, okay? Um, I think, number one, I'm going to have a conversation with my, my children. Say, hey, this is what mother is doing, and this is why mother is doing it. Uh, so that way they know that you're not just doing something just because, and they're not feeling a certain kind of way. They understand why mom is doing it. Now, on the flip side, when we break down the math, okay, if you're getting an extra $12,000 um, a year, that's an extra $1,000 a month. 
And if you're $70,000 in debt, if you can put $15,000 a year towards this debt, it will take you right about four years to get out of this, uh, about four years and some change to get out of this. And I think that's a great sacrifice. And if you tell your kids, hey, the next few years, mother is doing this so I can set myself up to be a better mother, a better provider for you all long term. So when you go off to college, we can make sure that you do not have to do what I did. Uh, so mom is going to do this for the next uh, four years so we could do this. But here's the thing, um, uh, Jennifer, you have to be very strategic these next four years. That's fifteen thousand dollars a year. If you can get on your budget and figure out how you can squeeze out another thousand dollars in that year, you can cut that down to about three and a half years. So I'm with Christy. I'm going to echo that. I think that uh, it doesn't. And I want to say this uh, as well, too. It doesn't make you a bad mother because you're not there as much as you would like. As long as you are communicating with your, your, your children, as long as you're communicating with your family, the reason why. Prime example, my mom uh, worked three jobs, Christy, when we were growing up. Uh, three jobs. She worked for the school district in the morning times. Uh, then after that, she'll go work for Kmart when Kmart was around. Then after that, she'll work for the Christian bookstore on the weekends. And she did that. And she told us why. You know why? She did that between September all the way up until December, the week before Christmas. She said, hey, your mom's not going to be around a lot right now because I want to make sure that you all have a good Christmas. And so mom's going to get off of work and go work another job. And every time my mom went to work, we got excited because we was like, wow, mom is doing that for us. So how you explain it and communicate to your kids what's going on and make them feel like it's going to benefit them in the long run. Your kids should. I'm not going to say all because <laughs> some of us are crazy. Um, uh, they should be like, mama, <laughs> I, I get you. Mama, I love you. Mama, thank you so much. Uh, but I think from the practical side. If you work the math in your benefit, if you put that extra $1,000 a month all towards your debt, the latest you could be out of debt is in four years and two months. If you could squeeze out another $1,000, you could be out of debt within a matter of about three and a half years. Yeah, and the, the one thing I would add, Jennifer, is I would say that if you decide to go this route that Anthony and I are recommending, I would say don't feel like a victim to it. Yeah. Choose it. Say, oh, yeah, I'm doing this for us. Oh, I'm yeah. all in. And say, I get to do this. I get to still get off at 2.30 or whatever time you said. There are some people that, uh, you know, they work three jobs for several years. They don't see their kids at all because it's it's a, it's a that sacrifice for a major debt or medical school. I remember Meg Meeker, uh, Anthony told mm -hmm. me she did, you know, was, there was literally years, like a yeah. couple years when she didn't see her kids hardly at all because it was a long-term goal of being a doctor and, and that type yeah. of thing. But I would just look for all the good in this of, oh my gosh, you still get to see your kids. You still get to see them him or your son in the afternoons you get to spend time with him you get to uh still go to the park be outside it's not like you don't get to see him at all yeah but and let's let's be real too though chrissy how many people have to work every single month they don't get two or three months right off, right right know? that's what i mean so, it yeah. feels like a lot to you but it's still such a blessing if yes. you choose to look at it that way of yes this is more than i'm used to but i can do this here's the blessings that are still camped in this if i get off at this time and this is what normal people work and all that type of thing and then it will change your attitude when you drive to work in the summer yeah because i don't want you driving to work in the summer jennifer with a scowl on your face and you're disgruntled of i don't want to be doing this and you feel like a victim you're not a victim Mm. You're choosing this. Yeah. I'm choosing, if you do, I'm choosing to work these extra months to get out of debt quicker for my son and I yeah. long term to be free. And then you can have all the summers you want to. The The other thing that I would say is remember it's a season. Anthony just gave you a timeline, three and a half to four years. This is a season. It's not forever. Yeah. I had a similar conversation with my family, uh, Anthony, in the spring of 2017 when I was about to launch my book, Business Boutique. I was like, now, mommy's about to be on the road. Mm -hmm. Matt and I talked about, we've talked with the family, talked to everybody. What is this going to look like? What's well, going to look like I'm not here a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's going to look like I'm going to need a lot of help. In the grand scheme of things, this is a small amount of time for this goal, this calling that I have to get the book out there. This doesn't mean forever. When you realize it's a season then it gives you the strength to get through it. That's good. It's not forever. It's That's just so we're going to buckle down for this period of time. Whatever that period of time is, we're going to buckle down for this period of time to get through it. Yep. I want to thank producer James Child and associate producer Kelly Daniel and my co-host Anthony O'Neill and you, America, for listening in. This is The Ramsey Show.
This is James Childs, producer of The Ramsey Show. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? Subscribe or follow today wherever you listen to podcasts. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio. This is The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm Christy Wright. I'm an author, speaker, and Ramsey personality, and I'm joined today by my good friend, also an author, speaker, and Ramsey personality, Anthony O'Neill. And we are taking your calls. Give us a call at 888 825 if you have a question about money, life, or business. And Anthony, I love it when we get to host together because we get excited. Yeah. We go back and forth. And one of the things I like about hosting with you is we'll take these calls and take some questions and then unpack the answer. Absolutely. And uh, uh, and really dig into it a little bit deeper, and that's a lot of fun. Yes. All right, let's go to the phones. We've got Angela in Salt Lake City. Hey, Angela, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. What's your question today? So my husband and I are currently um, knocking out our debt, and most of our debt is coming from our two vehicles, um, and we both decided that we're going to sell them this spring because we've got some equity in them. Um, the problem that I've got is my husband um, wants to use some of that equity to purchase a used dirt bike for the summer. Mm. Um, And I know that it wouldn't have a loan on it. Um, Technically, we would still own our vehicles outright because we'd be downgrading. But I just wanted to see what your input is on that and if that's a smart move or if it's a bad idea. I know that he really... Um, His heart's set on it, and I've already gotten him to agree with selling his beloved truck. So Mm. I just kind of want to know what what I can I can do. Yeah, is your husband there with you, Angela? No, he's working. (laughs) Anthony wants to shoot directly to him, Angela. Could you give us a call back? I'm just kidding. Uh, man, she's sneaking it in while he's gone. That's I know. She's up. like, oh, he's yes. gone. Oh, let me yes. just get some outside yeah, input yeah, here. Yeah. I love this. And, and I know oh, Christy's going to have my back. Worker. Christy's going to have my back. Yeah, I actually have your back right now. I'm so ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, hey, listen. So let me let me make sure I understand this correctly. Uh, once you all sell your, your two cars, you're going to be out of debt. You will have cash cars, correct? Yes. Okay, cool. How much money will you have in your savings account? Will you have the three to six the three to six months in your savings account? No. We um ha- we currently have the one thousand in our emergency funds. Then yeah. Um I-, I-, I hate to say this without your husband being there because I want him thinking we're talking behind his back, but you're right. I mean no <laughs> We shouldn't be purchasing anything major like that. We need to lay down a solid foundation. And to prevent you all from going back into debt, you need a fully funded emergency fund. So what's you all's combined mm-hmm. household income right now, Angela? Uh, about 95000 Okay, so $95,000. What's your mortgage payment? Um, total with our HOA, it's about sixteen. $100. Okay, so $1600. So right now, you need about 10 grand in your savings account to get the 3 to 3 months of your expenses, I would say. Does How that much sound is the dirt right? bike? I'm curious. So, um initially he thought that he could get one around 3000, but it seems like the price of things are going up and it's looking more like $4500. Yeah. $4500. So four thousand five hundred dollars. Oh, okay. I was about to say. Yeah, the kind of estimate he gave me. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's half of your your three to six months. So so no. Uh-huh. no. So so no. No. Uh, you know what, Angela? I gotta tell you, I when you said he has his heart set on it, like I I get that, man. I get my heart set on things too. The mm-hmm. thing is, is is we just have to be grown ups and we have to do things in the right order. And it doesn't mean he can't get the dirt bike ever. Bike ever. It just means we're not gonna get it when we don't even have more than a thousand dollars in our bank account right 
Does right. that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So it, just just encourage him in that sense. When you break the news to him of this news that Anthony and I have given you when he's been out of the house, please tell him it doesn't mean not ever. <laughs> it just means not right now. That's our that's our advice for you. And here's a rule of thumb that I go by, uh, Christy, for me. Okay. Uh, and this is not really something that Ramsey teaches. It's just something that I've been teaching since I've come uh, up underneath Ramsey and teaching something. I don't really buy something like that unless I can afford it at least twice. Okay. So it was like for me, when I purchased my, my used car, um, if you follow me, you know what I purchased. I won't say here on the radio. I didn't purchase it, though, until I had at least twice that amount in my account. Here's why. Let's say he goes and buy the dirt bike. Can he have the five thousand dollars cash? And then he comes back home. What happens? He has no money. Mm -hmm. He's broke. So if an emergency happens, Mm -hmm. no, he doesn't have any money. So for me, my philosophy is on top of my emergency fund, can I afford to purchase this twice? If that's a Gucci purse, if that's a car, if that's a backpack, if that's If it's a kitchen remodel. I remember you gave that example a couple weeks ago when you and I hosted together. Someone called in with a kitchen remodel and they had like the exact amount of money and no cushion. And I remember you saying that same thing. Yeah. Yeah. You want want to have some cushion because you don't know what will happen, Mm -hmm. especially on the kitchen remodel. You remember that? Like if if the estimate is 20,000, oh, you're going to spend about 25 to 30,000 on the car. Well, in that that example with the kitchen, yeah, you don't know how much something's going to cost. But even with the dirt bike, I mean, I hope nothing ever happens, but that's a very dangerous yeah. sport. Is it a sport? Yeah, it is a sport. <laughs> is that considered, I don't know. How, the hobby, whatever, That's that can be really dangerous. Yes. And I would hate for anything to happen, a, a wreck or you have to go to the hospital, anything like that with something so risky. And you got $1,000 in your bank account. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that, that's why I say just make sure you can afford to buy it twice. I got that from Jay-Z for those of y'all asking where I got it from. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's go to Austin in Philadelphia. Hey, Austin, what's going on? Hello, Rachel. Hello, Anthony. How's it going? Uh, it's well, Christy. I'm, I am Christy, yeah, Christy, but I love Rachel, and oh, that's yeah. a compliment. No <laughs> problem. No problem. I'll take it. Yes, Rachel and AO are here for you. What's oh, up, Mel? Man, Austin? So funny. I tried. I tried. Um, so basically, I'm, I just turned 23. I'm pretty financially secure. I definitely can't complain with that. Um, I stress about money a lot more than the average person. Well, maybe not, but... Um, and I just, I, I don't know about my career. I know I don't want to do it for much longer. Mm-hmm. I don't know when I what do you transition do? and I do highway construction. Okay. okay. And ha- like when you say financially secure, what's your savings, your debt free? Yeah, I uh, owe 18000 on my car and I got about between my real estate and other savings. I have about half a million. What? So. You have $500,000 in your account? And through, um, three investments, about, about give or take about three hundred thousand. And um, how much do you have liquid? Like mutual I'm, funds and stuff like that. Cool. How IRAs, much? Four one ks. Okay. Cool. How much do you have liquid in your savings account right now? I have a, a little over a hundred thousand. A little over a hundred thousand. Okay. Cool. Great. And I also own a house, cash. Okay. Cool. Great. Um, uh, because we're about to go to break, bro. I'm gonna help you out real quick. Um, you are secure. Okay, you need to take that money out and pay off your car. Okay, why do you have a house debt free, but you still, you know, have eighteen thousand dollars on your car? So I will go ahead and pay that off. In regards to the career pr- perspective or side of things, not perspective, but to the career side of things, I would encourage you. It sounds like you're not happy. Um, I would encourage you to. Uh, Check out our good friend, Ken Coleman, uh, who is our career expert. I will call into his show on Monday um, and tell him, hey, I'm great financially. Just paid off my car. Christy and Anthony told me to do that on Friday. Can you help me find or or figure out how to land my sweet spot into a career that I actually love? Uh, He would help you out with that. So give him a call Monday or Tuesday of next week, um, and he'll walk you through that. But, hey, young man, you're killing the game. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey folks, I got a great option to help you pay for your education. The Army National Guard. The Army National Guard believes you are the next greatest generation because you have proven that even in adversity, that you have what it takes to succeed. That's why they offer benefits like tuition assistance, career training, and a paycheck to help you avoid debt. No matter what your goals are, the Army National Guard can help you get there. Visit nationalguard.com to find out more. Right, co 
co-hosting with me today is Anthony O'Neill. We are good friends. We are Ramsey personalities, and we are here for you answering your calls about money, life, business, life balance, tough situation you're in. You're not sure which decision to make, and you just want an outside person to give you a new perspective. We are here for you. All right, we're going to go to the phones. We've got Nikki in Richmond, Virginia. Hey, Nikki, how's it going? Hi, how are y'all doing today? Good. How can Anthony and I help? Good. Thank you so much for taking my call. I do appreciate it. Um, so um, we were debt-free. We actually are in Baby Step 7. We was there um, to the station in December um, to do our debt-free screen. Congratulations. So, thank you. Thank you. So uh, we do have a question now. Um, so our household income is around 138000 to 140000 um, a year base pay. And um, so what we're calling for is um, we're living in... Um, a home now that my husband purchased when um, he was single. Um, and during that time, um, we're in our debt free journey. We wanted to go ahead and include the mortgage because it was like only on like $52,000 on it. So that's how we became debt free. The home is older. It was built in 1956, and we've been living here. Um, and we intended not to live here forever, um, but we had a plan to purchase our together home. And so um, we were going to stay here for two or three years to save up um, for the house because we were thinking the value was like $120,000. Um, but we had an ELP to come out on yesterday. And since it's the seller market, he told us what the comp price was, and now the value is $165,000. So, with our initial plan was to stay in the home for two or three years to save to do the one thousand. I mean, a hundred percent down. Um, but given it's a seller market, should we sell now and take a prop selling one hundred and fifty thousand, and then um, go into apartment for a year and a half to two years until we have enough for a hundred percent down, or do we continue to stay in the home that we're in um, for another two to three years and then sell? But I guess my only fear is, well, it's still be a seller market at that time yeah that, that's that's a great question you know i sold my house as well when it was a seller's market and i'm telling you right now um your house will not be on the market for long i mean i sold my that's house really within good. a matter of like 20 not, not even not even 30 minutes i mean wow. the house received <laughs> offers so i think right now it's up to you you and your family i mean do you if I was in your shoes, yes, I'm putting a house on the market today, um, and then I'm going to go rent something real small um, uh, just so we can stay low on our expenses, so we can save up more money. And then when it, be when it becomes a buyer's market, uh, mm -hmm. then I'm going to go out there because I do believe it it's a mountain. You're going to have a seller's market, buyer's market, seller's market, buyer's market. And yeah. so as soon as the buyer's market comes back around, absolutely, you should be able to go out there and find something great. Yeah, great question. And the one thing I would add to this is, uh, for those of you guys that are calling in with real estate questions, that type of thing, Anthony and I are always, as are always the, the Ramsey personalities, uh, we're talking with each other and we're talking with our ELPs. We're mm -hmm. talking with Dave Ramsey himself say, hey, we got a call. We weren't sure about this. And this is one of those questions that uh, we have heard directly from Dave, that this is what he would recommend to do, which is interesting to me because the, the nature of the market we're in right now is so unique. Yeah. And it's one of those things where it's like, oh, what is the right thing to do? And so, um, so yeah, that that uh, that's something we've been talking about here. And uh, congratulations, Nikki, you've done a great job to build a solid foundation. Uh, this is not a step back for you; it's a strategic step forward. It's just yes. a little looks a little bit different than maybe what you had in mind. But great question. All right, we have got a question from Andrew in LA. Hey, Andrew, how's it going? Oh, it's going pretty well and just wanted to say that you christy and al you're a dream team and i'm hoping that you guys co-host more often hey. we help each other really well hey man she gets me in trouble sometimes <laughs> but uh, you know I'll, you get I'll yourself in trouble i just highlight it <laughs> i that believe that hey right, hold up bro really <laughs> what's your what's your question andrew what's your question <laughs> So my job is mobile, and I can do it from pretty much anywhere in the world. And my wife wants to be a writer for kids' animation. In 2019, she landed her dream job working on a popular children's show, and we moved to Los Angeles. And then the pandemic hit, and there were a lot of changes in her company. She was let go, and they're not going to be bringing her back when things lift up. She's been trying her hardest to network, grow her online following, talk to the right people, improve her skills. She's often working like 60 hours a week to do that. And she's landed a few freelance gigs, but all of them are short-term, and none of them require her to live in Los Angeles. Mm. 
It's been over a year, and living in the city has been really draining on both my emotions and our finances. Yeah. And I want her to uh, to achieve her dream, but it's really hard to justify living in such an expensive area when we're getting little to no benefit from being here. Yeah. At what point should we throw in the towel and move to a less expensive area, probably out of state, or should we just double down on pursuing her dream for as long as we can? I think I think whenever we've talked about this before, uh, Anthony, but whenever I feel like it's these extreme examples, it's this or this, and they both feel really extreme and they both feel really bad. I, I felt start to feel a little anxious, and I would say it doesn't have to be that. I would say that should you move out of California, I would if I were you. You've been there a year, you've given it a shot, and the job she's getting, she doesn't have to be there. Does that mean you can never come back? No. Does it mean she can't do her dream job somewhere else? No. I mean, yeah. I, I just would take the pressure off of like you have to make your lifelong decision based on right now, which is a weird couple years, a weird market, job market, real estate market, all of that. I would just say, if you don't have to be there right now, and, and I'm, I mean, I'm assuming you and your wife have talked about this, but that she's okay with moving too. Yeah, I would. If I were you, I would get those those jobs that don't require you to be in California, save a lot of money, have a lot of fun, see a new area, have options. And then if in a different year, a different time, a different season, you look at your options and you want to go back because there's something that only happens there, then you can. But the, the reason that you're there is no longer there anymore. Yeah. And so when things change, things need to change. So yeah. I, I would, I yeah. would, I would head out. Yeah. I, I think I'm almost there with you too as well, Chrissy. Andrew, what's y'all's household income right now? Um, she brought in around 30,000 last year from her freelance gigs. And I brought in about, um, Net probably about one hundred and fifty thousand. One fifty, and uh, she brought in thirty thousand dollars net as well. Um, probably gross, so probably closer to like twenty thousand net because again, taxes are really high here. Okay, so one seventy k. Yeah, man, I'm I'm leaving I'm leaving California with that. I mean, now one seventy is still not bad income. You know, um, it goes oh, quick no. in LA, though. We're, it goes real quick in LA. Yeah, it, real, it it moves fast in California. Period. California, New York. Um, so if I'm if I'm you again, me personally, I'm looking at places like Tennessee, like Texas, uh, somewhere to where I can get something nice, be very comfortable, um, somewhere that has like a lot of land, and I can you know buy some things. So I would definitely leave, man. I, I would be having that conversation with my wife uh, tonight and saying, "Babe, by this summer, I think it's time to leave." Now here's the thing don't forget just like our last call you're in a seller's market so i wouldn't be trying to buy anything right now i would move somewhere rent something for the rest of the the rest of this year stack up some bread um, um and then let me ask you this question and you may have said this so i'm sorry if i'm repeating but do you have any debt right now uh just a mortgage on a rental property that uh we were living in and then when we moved here for the job we kept it and we're paying that off it's it's worth we bought it at 545 and we've paid it down to about 112 right now okay cool great and then you have how much money do you have liquid to you right now cash in the savings uh liquid um let's see i have a roughly oh gosh after i make my step ira contribution it'll be around 40,000 ish in our emergency fund and then I have a non-retirement mutual fund that has about ninety thousand in it. Yeah, so move. Yeah, I'm saying move. I mean, look into look into some of these states and see where y'all want to go. And that's and the reason why I say Texas is because it's a it's a forty five minute flight back to L A. If something was to come up with her dreams down the road, I just want to I just want to point out one thing, Andrew. You are a really supportive husband. Yeah. The fact that y'all move there for her dream job, you're staying for her dream job, you're considering staying longer for her dream job. She's bringing in thirty thousand dollars a year with this dream. That's like it's we're trying to get it going, and you are still believing in her. That is an awesome husband. Yeah. Well done for believing in her. Yeah, man. I'm just I'm really I'm really impressed by that. So regardless of where you end up, she's got a good husband that believes in her, and y'all are going to be just fine. You're doing great financially. And you're going to be just fine. Well done. Mentor some of us other brothers with that same love, <laughs> brother. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show.
tired of feeling stuck with your money, like you'll never get out of debt or save enough for the future? Listen, it doesn't have to be that way. You can make progress with your money and faster than you think. But the only way to make it happen is with a budget. That's why you need a Ramsey Plus membership. You'll get access to the premium version of our Every Dollar Budgeting app where you will first plan out every dollar that you'll spend and save before the month begins. Also, connect your budget to your bank so you never miss a transaction and even get custom reports that show you where you can find more money to put towards your goals. When you budget and actually get intentional with your money, you will make progress fast and you can start budgeting for free today. To start your free trial of Ramsey Plus, go to DaveRamsey.com. That's DaveRamsey.com. All right, let's go to Derek in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Hey, Derek, how's it going? Good. How about yourself? Good. What's your question for Anthony and I? So I have a question about investment. Uh, My wife and I have a little bit of extra pocket cash that I've held on to for quite some time. And I want to know... What would be the best investment to put my my money in? I have about eight thousand uh, dollars that I have in pocket cash, and I would like to, you know, have it make some money. I do currently have a four hundred one k with my job that I have right now, and I know that eight thousand dollars ain't much, but we do have the thousand dollars for the emergency funds. We have the three months in the bank and everything else. So I just want to put it somewhere instead of underneath my bed. <laughs> I like that, man. Now, hey, uh, I just want to make sure I'm clear. You have no consumer debt, no student loans, no credit cards, none of this, correct? No, sir. I, I worked my tail off to, to pay it all off, um, get everything paid off. The only thing that we do have right now is a mortgage okay. that right. we just bought our first house with. So walk me through baby step four, where we're investing 15%. How much are you investing in your 401k right now? Well, that's where it kind of gets a little tricky because I'm the only in source of income right now. Okay. And I did knock it down to the matching with, with they match me 5%. Okay. And I'm putting in 5% right now. Okay. Uh, my wife is a stay at home mom and she's going to be working here in the next six to eight months, something like that. Okay. Are you investing into a Roth IRA? Any mutual no, funds? No, sir, I am not. All right, cool. So that's where you're going to put this extra $8,000. Because again, uh, we want you to invest 15% of the household income. So right now you're only investing 5%. So what we need to do is take this other $8,000 and put that inside of an investment. But then also moving forward every month, you're going to be matching your your uh, 5%, which is 401k. Then you're going to take some more money and you're going to put that inside of a Roth IRA. So I would definitely jump on the line with one of our smart best of pros, have them walk you through this whole process uh, because you may, depending on your income, you may not be able you you'll max out your Roth IRA, but then you may have some extra money left over from there as well from, with your 15 percent. So we may come back to your 401k, dump some stuff into that. Or if you have an HSA with your job, you, we could j- dump some of that money to your HSA. But right now, I think the key thing is the very first thing is you need to go uh, max out your your Roth IRAs. Uh, jump on the line with one of our smart Vester pros. Go to DaveRamsey.com, type in smart Vester, and uh, you'll get phone calls from about five to six of our smart Vester pros. And and here's the thing, Derek, um, interview all of them, man, because I, what I hear in him, Christy, is that he's very passionate. He's trying to do the right thing. And so when it comes to investors and financial advisors, sit down and find the best fit for you and your wife and someone that can teach you along this uh, along your journey here. Uh, so great question, man. Love it. Um, lo- love your heart. Uh, congratulations on being debt free. And yeah, I, mean, I love it when someone great. has extra cash and they're like, "Where can I invest it? Not yeah. what can I buy?" So Ooh. you're you're gonna do great. I well like done. That. All like right, that. we've got Taylor in South Bend, Indiana. Hey, Taylor, how's it going? It's going. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, What's your question? Um. Well, I'm just working on uh, just the next step. Um. I'm. I'll be 20 this year. I go be 26. You're cutting out on us, Taylor. You're 26. You have a girlfriend that's 26. I'm trying to piece it together here. My girl. I'm sorry. We were fortunate enough to buy a house in December before this crazy spring market. I have no debt. She has probably just under. Uh, 
Yeah, sorry, sorry, Taylor. We cannot hear you. Maybe call back when you've got a little bit better connection. Let's move on to Nathan in Des Moines. Where's, let's see here. There we go. Nathan, how are you? Oh, I'm good. Thank you so much for having me on, guys. Yeah, how can Anthony and I help? So this is a relationship question, oh. sort of just in general terms. Since I'm in my uh, second year in college, I was kind of putting my nose to the grindstone for like my first two years doing like 18 credit hours. And I was going to drop that for my junior senior year once the coursework becomes heavier. But I just wanted to know how much should I like put towards like my social life since I sort of felt left out on some things. So like, what would you guys say? Like, so how I'm, much should I like try to put towards the social life? I'm curious uh, about the why behind that is are you trying to graduate early? Are you what's the reason for go getting such a large course load? So it was mostly because. My my father is like one of the big influences in my life. He's like, he, he said like to always push to do the best you can. And I was like, you're right, because he's paying pretty much through my way through college. Yeah. So I got to like in, make sure that I impress my parents. You know, I can't yeah. <laughs> hurt the piggy bank. So, yeah. 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 Well, let me ask you this question. You are you're young, man. Um and I feel like you're you're feeling like, man, I'm missing out on fun. I'm missing out on life. But are you really missing out on life? Because you're working hard and you're using your youthfulness uh, wisely right now. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I Because it's like everyone tells about how like, college is this experience. And then I see like the parties and stuff happen. And you always get that like sort of feeling like I kind of wish I was there. Yeah, let me hold on, hold on. Let me let me let me help you out here, brother. We gonna we gonna we gonna park right here. We gonna park right here <laughs> because I just want to say this right because I'm not on I'm not at the table, so I can't say you know certain things on on the Ramsey show. Uh, but here here here's what you're not seeing. You're seeing parties, but you're also could be seeing. Cause I'm not gonna say everyone who parties, uh, they are not uh, good students. They're not making A's. But I, what I don't want you to do is is look at the fun life look at uh the exterior life and see kids partying you're seeing kids having boyfriends and girlfriends you're seeing your peers having fun you do not know what's on the flip side of their choices today okay what you need okay. to do is be focused on solely your life have a tunnel vision hey i am focusing today I am getting an education today. I am taking these extra classes today. I am working hard today. I am making the right choice for my life today so that the caliber of my future is better tomorrow. OK, so, yes, are you going to be a little uncomfortable today? Will you miss out on a little bit of things today? Yes, you will. But let me tell you this much, man. The average person is going to work until they're 75, 80 years old. You're not going to be average mm -hmm. because you're going to make the right decisions today. You're going to retire at 45. You may become a millionaire at 35. I don't know the way you sounded right now. You may be rich before you even can blink. You know what I'm saying? So you got to focus on your life. Don't focus on their life. You focus on your life. Give your life all the attention. And I promise you down the road, you'll thank yourself for not worrying about what they were doing because they could be in debt. They will be working until they're 80 years old they will be driving uber at 90 years old trying to get some money but you will be in a wise position man so don't worry about that stuff you get fired up yeah when i, I hear young people i want to dig into this though when we come back from the break i want to dig into this because i think you have a really great point and i have some questions about it oh, so Lord. this is no this is good this is good because it's a valid question whether it's about your college or even someone working in a job working lots of hours i want to dig into this because this is an important conversation okay this is the Ramsey Show.
scripture of the day. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. That's Psalm 33, 4. And Jack Canfield said, for every reason it's not possible, there are hundreds of people who have faced the same circumstances and succeeded. That's a good word. I like that. I like that. No excuses. No excuses. Okay, Anthony, before we went to break, uh, we had a call. College student working his tail off. 18-hour course load, missing out on friendships. My question for you that I wanted to ask, and we ran out of time, my question for you is, when is enough? And I mean this literally. So so you could always work more. You could always take more classes. You could always do more, 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 more to make more progress faster. At one point, do you go, I am, I am pushing the limits. I'm working really hard. I'm being a good steward of my time, my course load, my work whatever that thing is for you. Because this isn't just a college student question. You could apply this to work. I could get six extra jobs. At what point is it enough? And you go, yeah, I'm not going to, um, it, I don't want it to be this black hole of like, it's never enough. It's never enough. Yeah. And you don't get to enjoy your life. Now, I don't want him going to parties, but right. to have friendships or have hobbies or have time off, at what point, because you, you, for the longest time, worked with teens and college students. Yeah. I know you still do. Yeah. At what point do you say like, hey, you're doing a great job. You can have, you can go on a picnic, something, you know. <laughs> virtuous on the weekends <laughs> whatever <laughs> where it's not a bad thing to have a life i'm curious no I, I and chrissy i actually learned this from you you know you you teach priorities you know um and i think for me once you set your priorities in life just make sure that those priorities are being accomplished mm-hmm. so if education is your number one priority right now then i think that you need to be focused on that and what does that what 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 do you have to do uh, to accomplish that? Now, do you need to be taking, you know, ten classes a semester? No, mm-hmm. um, I mean, but can you take some extra classes right. a semester? Right. Absolutely. Right. Um, but if after prior, if after education, uh, relationships, healthy relationships are important to you, and then yes, you know, you make time to build healthy yeah. relationships. Uh, but for me, I think I, I tend to focus on one thing and one thing only probably one of the main reasons why I'm not married yet because I was focused on transitioning into this new career that I had. Yeah. And so I really wanted to focus solely on just, you know, um, learning Ramsey's uh, culture, learning everything we teach and talk about when it comes to finances. And I was in, I was studying, I was learning everything about Dave, learning everything about our team. Um, now I'm in the season to where I'm, I'm ready for a relationship. That's actually my number one priority uh, right now. So I'm focused on that and other things fall behind that. So I think once you just outline your priorities, then you're able to really gauge from, okay, what am I doing too much? What am I actually not doing enough of? Yeah, it's interesting. That's a really good point because I've noticed in my life and especially working with different personality types and people with different strengths and weaknesses, I feel like that, at least for me in my faith, God is always stretching me where I'm weak. So I tell people, you know, if you're that type A go-getter, workaholic, you have a bent towards being a workaholic, you have a bent towards, you know, at, at all costs, you might need to learn to take a Sabbath. Yes. You might need to learn to make a friend. Yeah. But for the person that they're doing the bare minimum, yeah. they're taking hardly any classes, they're just skating by, you need to give it some gusto. Yes. You need to work hard. So it's almost like we all kind of tend to swing to these extremes. And yeah. I think the growth happens when you grow in areas that you're weak. Yeah. When you figure out what is that, what is hard for me? And let me do that. So even just, I was curious with him because that's one of those things where it's like, he sounds like that go-getter. Yeah. That's like, he is yeah. a perfectionist. He's hard work, which is awesome. But at the same time, maybe there's some growth there. Yeah. All right. Great, uh, great conversation. All right. We're going to go to Ferris in Houston, Texas. Hey, Ferris, how's it going? Good. How are y'all doing today? Good. What's your question for Anthony and I today? Uh, so I and I just recently graduated uh, 2019, December, and I have about uh, $20,000 in uh, student loan debt okay. that has been deferred. I haven't had to pay one payment yet. Um, and um, I recently, in October, I bought a car. Um, I make about 55 a year pre-tax. 55? And... 55, yeah. Okay. Um, and the reason why I bought a car is because I got 72 months interest free, and my car payment is only about 280 a month. I was wondering um, how, if I should sell my car now. Sell it. Hearing Anthony's, Anthony's not sure how he feels about this. Sell let's, it. Gi- let's give him a minute. Hang on first. Let's let him, let him think about it. <laughs> what in the world, man? I hate hearing that. I got 72 months interest free, zero interest. You're still in debt? 
You're still in debt. <laughs> it's not free money, Ferris. You're still in debt. Yeah. You're still in debt, Ferris. Mm-hmm. What kind of car did you buy? Uh, a Toyota Camry SXC. You you bought a Toyota Camry what? A Toyota Camry. It's an XSC. How oh, much okay. was it? Okay. How much did you pay for it? Uh, I put down nine thousand down payment. Um, I have about twenty thousand left on it. Or okay, 19. so your total debt is forty thousand. Yes, right now my total debt is about forty thousand. So let me get this straight. Before you got the car, you had twenty thousand dollars in debt, and you had nine thousand yes. dollars cash. Uh, yeah, and I also have about seventeen or eighteen thousand dollars in the stock market. Okay. Ferris, I'm going to calm down, bro. I walk you, him through the baby steps. Walk yeah, him through I'm, the baby I'm steps. I'm going to walk you through the baby steps, Ferris, and then I want you to I, – I, okay. I, I need to interview you on my show because I think a lot of young people would love your story. All right? So, Ferris, okay. here, here's what I'm going to recommend, man. Mm-hmm. Here's what I'm well, – your income right now is $55,000 a year. You owe $20,000 left on the car. All right, so here's what I want you to do. Right now, you need to put all – you need to stop everything you're doing, and you need to go um, – I'm going to give you – a free year of Ramsey Plus, okay? So stay on the line when we get off. Kelly's going to give that to you, okay. and I want you to watch all the classes, okay? okay? Because I don't have enough time to walk you through all the baby steps. But baby step number one mm-hmm. is $1,000 in your emergency fund. Then number two is you're going to pay off all of your debt using the debt snowball. The reason why I'm kind of like if you're watching me on YouTube, you see my facial expressions and my mm-hmm. hands going all over the place. And I know the producer's prize and Anthony calm down. And, and Chrissy's <laughs> like, oh, my Lord, Anthony's getting upset. It's because I'm hearing a young man. You could have been debt free, bro. You could have been 100% mm-hmm. debt free and you could have paid cash for the car. You're, you're the young man that I wish I could have got a hold of you, you know, three months ago before you purchased the car. Uh, because I would have said, all right, cool, let's get you a car. You got seventeen thousand dollars in single stocks right now right um mm-hmm. and then yeah, you have you had apple. say it again it's all in apple it's all in apple yeah so seventeen thousand dollars in single stocks you had nine thousand dollars in um in cash so you're sitting at twenty eight thousand well yes yeah about twenty eight about twenty seven thousand dollars right there uh so i'm like man listen um let's pay off the twenty thousand dollars in debt and then let's take the rest of that go buy a cash car for right now and then from there let's start working our way up to go ahead and get you into the toyota camry into something a little bit more nicer that you really wanted but right now Mm -hmm. We can't do that. So um, I want you to go ahead and focus on paying off uh, this $20,000 in, in student loans. You're going to line your debt up from smallest to largest. And you have two options, okay? Um, and I'm going to treat you just like how Dave was here. You have two options. You can sell the car, which I would do in your situation, um, or because it is only worth, it's less than half of your, your actual income, um, you can just get mm-hmm. very aggressive with it and pay that car off. Um, but if you go that route, man, I'm talking about you need to go out there and get you an extra job. It's a nice car. You need to be driving for Uber. You need to be delivering mm-hmm. pizza. I want to see you debt free within the next six months. Bottom line. Okay. Okay. And so um, you can sell your car. Uh, that would be great. The the, the problem that you're going to have from there is, will you have the cash to go buy you a used car? That's the problem. Mm-hmm. So if you're saying, hey, Anthony, I can sell the car and get the cash to go buy a new car. I'm going that route. If you're saying, Anthony, I can bust my butt within the next six months to pay off all of my debt. I'm cool with that, too. Yeah. The, the thing to remember, too, as well, Ferris, is it is not free money. Yeah. Don't make this mistake again. When you get debt free, like Anthony told you, just to get, the next time someone says, oh, Zero percent interest for however long. It does not matter. You're still in debt. It is still buying something you cannot afford. And when you do that, you are taking steps backwards, not steps forward. And America, it's not free. It would just include it inside of your car. Okay? That's it. <laughs> That's it. Anthony, this was good. This was fun today. We get fired up. I love hanging out with you. I want to thank producer James Childs, associate producer Kelly Daniel, my co-host Anthony O'Neill, and you, America, for hanging out with us. This is The Ramsey Show.
have a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts.